welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In the last video, I showed you a way of taking a list of words and generating a new word which wasn't any of the words on the list, but which sort of sounded like the words on the list. Um, and specifically what it did was it looked at the frequency with which particular letters followed particular letters. Um, and then it generated a new word which obeyed the same, uh, the same probabilities. So if you had a lot of double E's in your original data, you would get a lot of, or you would tend to get, because it's all, it's random of course, you would tend to get a lot of double E's in the words that you generated. Um, we have been working with um, a list of Finnish um, place names, just because Finnish is a quite sort of distinctive language. Seemed like it to me anyway. Um, but of course, the general principle will work should work with any list of, you know, with any data. Um, you could put Babylonian kings in there. You could put um, names of African ethnic groups. You could put whatever. As you could put locations from Star Wars or from some other um, franchise, as long as um, there was some something distinctive about the the letter frequencies in the list, you should sort of recognise um, the output as being as sounding sort of roughly like um, the data that you had. Now, the the big problem with the method that I showed you in the last video is that it's very very slow, and I promised that I would show you a a quicker, um, in fact, a much quicker um, method of doing the same thing. Uh, and that is what I'm going to do um, right in this video. So uh, this, this one can still be quite slow. As you can see, it's still sort of struggling to um, create this quite long word, but uh, it is much, much quicker than the, than the previous version. Um, so I'm also, in the course of that, going to teach you a couple of new commands which will allow you to turn uh, letters into numbers and then vice versa numbers back into letters. Um, and we'll discuss why that's useful. So this is, even though it does the same thing, this is basically a brand new program. Um, so we have the, uh, we have a little note here about dot length, which is um, a quite useful way of um, getting information about the length of either an array or of a string. And then we just have the credits of where I got the, um, the source data. We have dollars $E, which is an array with, with the source data. Um, that's all the same as uh, the previous video, but from, from, from here on, it's, it's basically entirely new. So uh, the first array I want to talk about is dollars $N. Um, dollars n is going to store the data about the frequencies of particular letters following other letters um, in numerical form and we've got this note underneath it um, and I'll <clears throat> I'll read it firstly I'll explain what what that capital a s c i i is um, that's ASCII stands I think for American Standard Code for Information Interchange and it is a convention uh, within computing where uh, each character has a set numerical value and similarly um, for a given number, at least within the range, you can, um, you can uh, say what its assigned uh, character is. So everything from lowercase a to lowercase z, and then everything from uppercase a to uppercase z, and then the, all of the digits, and then all of the um, punctuation and special characters, the ampersand, percentage sign, the dollar sign, and the hash, the at sign, the exclamation mark, and so on. All of those have their ASCII, um, their ASCII value, and then there's a few special, um, a few special 
keys as well that also have their own value, like carriage return has its own value and tab and stuff, a few things like that. Um, so that's that's what that ASCII means. Uh, now I'll read what this says. It probably won't mean anything, or probably won't be very clear to you, but then I'll explain what it means and hopefully it'll um, it'll mean a bit more after the explanation. So given the letter with ASCII value X, the chance of ASCII value Y following is dollars $n, dollars $x, dollars $y out of dollars $n, dollars $x, zero. Now what does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say that we had a much, much smaller and simpler set of data than what we've, what we've really got. And let's say we looked at all of the instances of the character lowercase t, and let's say that we only found five. And let's say that they were as follows. We found TA, TE, TI, um, TT, and then we found another TA, let's say. So we found we found five cases of uh, of the letter T. And so if we were, if we had that that data, and if we wanted to create a word that obeyed the same probabilities as the data that we had, then that would mean that if we started with a lowercase t, we would want an a to be the next character two times out of five, because that happens two times out of five, one there and one there. We would want the character e to be the next character one time out of five, and then we would want the character I to be to be the next character one time out of five, and we would want the character T to be the next character uh, one time out of five. Um, so the way that we were, uh, uh, would store that, let's say the T, let's say that its ASCII value is a hundred. That that's not right, but I'm just guessing, just taking that as a as an example. Well, we would go to t, sorry, we would go to dollars n, dollars uh, one hundred, zero, and we would store the value of how many, how many instances of of t followed by something else do we have in total, which in this case would be five, and then we would say, all right. TT, how many times does that happen? Well, that happens once. So we'll go to N 100, 100, and we'd store the value 1. And then we'd look at TA, and we'd say, what's the value, what's the, what's the ASCII value of, of A? Well, let's say that the ASCII value of A is 85. Again, that's not right, but let's say that it is. Then we'd go, all right, we'll go to dollars $N, 185 <clears throat> and we we'll store the value 2 and so we do the same with the ASCII values of E and I and so we would end up with um, N100 0 equals 5 and then we'd have 2 in there we'd have 1 in there and we'd have 1 in a couple of other places adding up to adding up to 5 and then if we, if we ended up with a T and we wanted to find out what the next letter was randomly, but using these probabilities, we would generate a random number from 1 to 5, and then we would look through these slots in order, in numerical order. So we, we would say, all right, um, if it's a 1 or a 2, if that, if that number from 1 to 5 is a 1 or a 2, then we'll... Uh, use whatever character 85 is, which in this example is A. And if not, TT will give that a, we'll, we'll, we'll do that if it's 3. And then TE, TI, TE might be if it's 4 and TI if it's 5. Um, so in other words, we would, we would, um, we would be able to uh, sort of randomise what, what letter to use next. And this is going to be much quicker than 
the previous method, the method we used in the last video, because in the last video we had a big array of all of the all of the different sets of two characters. So in, as well as T A, T E, T I, T T, and T A, we also had H O, H E, H I, A. You know, all of them, and we'd look through this whole array until we found one with a T, where the first character was T. And of course, most of the time, the first character is not going to be T because there's a lot of different letters in use here. Um, whereas with this, we don't have to. We 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 are only looking at the ones we want. We're not we're not spending most of our time looking through sort of every set of two characters. So that's the main reason why it's much much faster. So let's look again at this sentence or this this bit of the sentence and see if it makes more sense. Sorry, I keep. So given the letter with ASCII value x, the chance of ASCII value y following is n x y out of n x 0. So to use the example um, that I've just said, the chance given the lowercase t, the chance of an a following would be n whatever the value of t is, or lowercase t, whatever the value of a is, out of n, whatever the value of t is, 0. And I'll show you how to um, how to do that random number and how to do that selection um, when we come up to it. So that is n. Um, and once we've gone through e and analysed it and put all the numbers into n, we mostly use n from then on. We mostly ignore the original data. And then we have r. This is the only other... Um, uh, array that we're going to use and R has the results because as we generate these letters of course we have to store what we've generated so that we can um, display them later and so uh, if we started with TA R1 would be T I'm sorry I keep saying T but it is actually lowercase t specifically because uppercase and lowercase letters have a different ASCII value they're, they're, they're counted as different characters um, but anyway so R1 might be might be lowercase t, r2 might be lowercase a, r3 would be whatever follows that, n, whatever it may be, and so on, except that they're not stored as uh, the text, they're stored as their ASCII value, so they're stored as a series of numbers, and then those numbers are turned back into letters right at the end when it's time to display it. So here's how we do that. So all of this code, all of all of this quite big chunk of code, um, is taking e, the e array, and uh, working out what to write into n. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. So we have a for loop, which is z. It's for z equals 1, z is less than or equal to e dot length minus 1, z plus plus. Well, what does e dot length mean? Well, e is an array, and as the note up here says, for an array, dot length is the highest um, filled in slot plus 1. So, e dot length is the highest filled in slot in E. In other words, if if E was filled in up to slot 10, E dot length would be 11. It's the highest filled in slot plus 1, minus 1. In other words, it's the highest filled in slot. So we're going to go from 1 to whatever the highest filled in slot of the E array is. And for each of them, we add an asterisk to the end. Um, it doesn't have to be an asterisk, it just has to be any character that doesn't appear in the original data. Um, and the reason that we're doing this is so that we can um, know when to end the word. Um, we, we're counting the asterisk as a sort of special character that means all right, we're at the end of the word. So for example, to get back to our, our little example, Let's say we had T A, T E, T I, 
TT, TA. Let's say actually we found another T. Let's say we found a T at the end of a word. Um, I don't think that's true in real life, but let's say there was one, one word where, where the last letter was T. We would store that as T asterisk. And then if we were if we had a lowercase t and we were deciding what to um, what to put next, we'd have six possibilities and we'd have a, a one in six chance that we'd choose the character asterisk. Um, and the program is set up such that when you pick an asterisk it doesn't um, it, it doesn't it doesn't get going that, that, that's when it stops. So in other words the um, the length of the uh, the words that are generated should be roughly proportional to the length of um, the words in the original data and the endings of the words, the character that ends the word should be roughly proportional to what characters end the word in the source data. So if you never had an M at the end of a word in the source data, then you will never generate a word which ends in M because you'll never have an M asterisk. So we add an asterisk to um, every, uh, every one of these words. And then we have another for loop. The for loop is from zero up to dollars E square bracket dollar Z N square bracket dot length minus two and then it just in, it increments by one. So what is, well, e dot z, we know what that means. That just means, for example, Turku or Oulu or just any one, any one of these individual examples. And we know that for a string, because we're now dealing with a string, not the array as a whole, for a string, dot length is the number of characters. So for Turku, you would expect the dot length to be five, but remember that we've put an asterisk at the end of it. So for Turku, which is a five character word, the, uh, the dot length will now be six with the addition of the asterisk. Um, so in that particular case, ez dot length minus two will be four. So what is the significance of four? Well, we should remember that in strings, the first character is character zero, not character one. So that's t that T is, is character zero, then U is character one, and R is character two, K is character three, and U is character four. So that four is, um, or that, that range from zero to four is just the range of the actual original characters, all the characters that are in the string other than the asterisk that we've added at the end. So what these two, in short, what these two for loops mean in plain English is go through every, um, go through every uh, uh, bit of every string that's in this E array, add an asterisk to the end of each of them, and go through every character except for the asterisk that you've just added. And then, now, now we have a new command. We have this dot code point at, um, which is something I have never discussed before. And that is a command for turning a character into a number. So this is where we get the, this is where we get the ASCII, um, the ASCII values. So we set x equal to dollars e square bracket dollars z n square bracket square bracket dollars y n square bracket now what does that mean we've got two numbers referring to a one dimensional array well you can do that as long as um, the thing that you're referring to is a string because you can count the first it counts the first number as just the slot in the array and then the second number as the the character which the number of the character so e dot z dot y is an individual character within um, within that uh, that member of the array turned into a number. So the ASCII value of the character rather than the character itself. 
and then we do the, exactly the same with W, and the only difference is that instead of Y, we've got Y plus 1. So um, we've got these two, these two numbers that represent two consecutive characters. So for example, with to use Turku again, um, the first pair we'd get, at least when we're dealing with this one, would be the ASCII value of lowercase t and then the ASCII value of lowercase u. So we've, we've got these numbers and they represent one pair, one equivalent of those TAs, TEs, etc. that we've been looking at. And now we need to store those in N. Um, we've got this we've got this array N. All we've done is um, is uh, set it up. Um, you will probably remember that with two dimensional arrays you have to go through and set up every individual slot of them, like you have to set up sort of an array within an array. You can't, there is no, there is no command. You can't do this, for example, to say, right, set that up as a two dimensional array. You have to set it up as a one dimensional array, and then you have to set up N1 as another array, and N2 as another array, and so on for every value that you wish to use. And we haven't, we haven't done that yet. So here's how we do that. We do that as we go. We have, if exclamation mark dollars N dollars X. Well, what that means is if if not, that, that exclamation mark means not. So if not dollars n square bracket dollars x n square bracket n square bracket. So what does that mean? Well, it means if we haven't yet set up the x slot of n, if we haven't done the equivalent of set n, you know, 100, if we haven't done that yet for, for, the, for, for dollars x, if we haven't done that, then do it now. Set dollars n x equals square brackets. Of course, we only want to do that when it hasn't already been set up, because if it's been set up, we've got some numbers in there. We don't want to. We don't want to reset it up. I think that causes errors anyway. But so all that's saying is, if n x hasn't yet been turned into its own little array, do that now. And then we say, <coughs> all right, what about what about n x zero what about that slot well because we know because of this we know that nx has already been set up so we know that we can talk about nx zero uh, we can talk about nx zero without generating an error but we have this if not dollars n x zero then set nx zero to be equal to one else set nx zero plus plus which means increment x0 by 1, add 1 to it, or make it equal to itself plus 1. And the reason we have to have this, this bit here, the reason we can't just say set nx0 plus plus is because if you have, if, if we haven't put any, if we haven't put any information or said anything about what is in x0, it's not 0, it's undefined, and that is a different thing to 0. And if you try and use plus plus on a value that's undefined, it'll get an error. It'll say, well, I don't know, I don't know what nx0 is, so how can I say what one plus that is? So we either, if we've already set up nx0, then just add one to it, or in this case, if we haven't yet used nx0, then set it to a, a value of one. So we're treating it as if we as if we had, as if it were zero, and then we plus plus it, and then we do exactly the same except for n x w. If if n x w doesn't exist, then set it as one. Otherwise, plus plus, and then we end the for loops. So we do that for every um, for every value of z and y, which means for every um, we, for every uh, item in this list and then for every character in each item in this list. And having set up the data, actually actually generating the, um, generating the word is relatively quick. Like most of the code is actually setting it up ready to go. Um, 
So we're sort of more than halfway there, we should be anyway. So here's what we do. We set z equal to random 1, e dot length minus 1, and we know again e is an array, so e dot length is the highest slot plus 1. So in other words, e dot length minus 1 is the highest slot plus 1 minus 1, or the highest slot. So between 1 and the highest slot in e, well that just means choose the slot in e, of course. And then we set r, remembering that r is our array where we've got the numeric values of the word. Set r1 equals e z0 dot code point at. Um, I should say, by the way, you have to use the capital letters. You can't just type in dot code point at as all lowercase, and you can't um, ignore the brackets. It has to be it has to be typed like that with a capital P and the capital A, and have the empty um, the empty set of brackets. So, in other words, take e z, take character number zero, i.e., the first character, turn it into a number, store that in R one, and then you do exactly the same in R2, except instead of EZ0, it's EZ1. So what we've got in R1 and R2 is the numeric values of the first two letters of a randomly chosen item in the array E. So we, if, we had cho if we had chosen this particular one, we'd set the numeric value of lowercase p in R1 and then the numeric value of lowercase a in R2. And now, having done that, we include randomize, in other words, we're ready to start um, creating the rest of the word. So, we set z equal to, you'll notice that we're using z for sort of lots of different things, because z, I usually use z, x and y, and then maybe w and v if I have to as, as temporary variables, so they can, they can mean a lot of different things throughout the, um, throughout the program. So, set z equal to r, R dot length minus one. Well, that just means the highest slot in R. So dollars R dot length is the highest slot plus one. Again, minus one. That minus one is the highest slot. So we, as the note says, Z is the numeric value of the current rightmost character of the word, and we need that because we need to use that. Um, to look at, to know which, to know which uh, part of the of the n array to look at. We need to look at the part of the n array that corresponds to that um, that particular numeric value, of course. So we start with y equal to one. We're going to we're going to set slot slot one of of n um, or of the relevant bit of n. So it'll be n z. 1 and then nz2 and then nz3 and we'll keep checking and I'll, I'll show you how it works. And then we set x is equal to a random number between 1 and dollars $nz0. Now you'll remember that I said before with this with this very sort of simplified source data with these six items, we would have, um, if we were treat, if saying that t was 100, we might have that equal to 6. So that's the one, and we generate a number between 1 and 6, and that would tell us which, you know, which one of these to pick next. So that's what we're doing here. This is the random number that we're going to be, we're going to be using. Having generated the random number, we need to, um, Work out which which character that random number corresponds to, and um, uh, we're going to do that on the next page, which is find next character. So, remembering that y is the slot that we're looking at of n z, and z is the the letter that we're trying to find the next letter for. If not dollars n z y. Then we're going to do this. Now, um, most of the time, n, z, y, we won't have defined anything for it because we're only adding numbers when we find a pair um, that follow each other. And um, 
remembering there are a lot of ASCII values. They don't. They uh, the the letters are actually not at one. They're 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 quite a lot higher. Um, so most of the time, most of these slots are actually going to be undefined. So this is going to be the case most of the time. If it's the case, well, that's simple. Just add one to Y and include find next character. In other words, okay, this slot isn't of any interest to us. Find the next, um, find the next one. In other words, go to the top of, go to the top of the page essentially. But if we have a slot that does have some value, then we need to do all this code. So the code, so we've found that nzy has some value. Well, we're going to reduce x, the random number, by the value that's stored in there. And then we're going to see, okay, is that greater than, is x now greater than zero? Well, if it is, then we then we do the same thing. We increment y and we find next character. Otherwise, we found the one that we wanted, and then we, we do this code. Now I'll come back to this code, or I'll explain this code in a, in a bit, but let me show you why that works. Let's say that we have uh, the bit of n that corresponds to let's say that equals six, and let's say dollars n um, T, uh, whoops, and etc. So remembering these these characters, they're not going to be like that. They're going to be numbers. But so we generate a random number from one to six, um, and let's say we generate one. We generate a one. Well. If that's the case, and let's say this is the order in which we check these slots, when we check the slot corresponding to T followed by A, we'll take, we'll say, ah, oh, there is a value in this one. We'll take one away, and we'll say, is X greater than zero? Well, no, X is, X is actually equal to zero. So, if we generate a one, then we will choose A. And in other words, there's a one in six chance that we'll choose A, and that's what we want. We want we want there to be a one in six chance. All right. Well, let's say we generate a two. If we generate a two, then we'll take one away when we get here, and so, and then we'll take another one when we get here, and then x will be zero. So there's a one in six chance that we choose E, and then let's say. Um, actually, that that was two in the previous example. But all right, so let's say let's say this is the case instead. Well, now if we generate a one or a two, when we get to here, x will be won't be more than zero. So there's a two in six chance that we choose a, and that's exactly what we want. We have a two stored here and a six stored there, and we want that to mean a two in six chance. So if we generate a 1 or 2, we'll choose A. If we generate a 3, we'll choose E, because then we'll take 2 away from the 3 and leave 1, and then we'll take 1 away here, and that'll leave exactly 0, and so on. So we can see that the, the chance of a given slot being picked is always equal to its number out of the number in slot 0. So that's a way that you can... Um, pick, uh, you know, have, have weighted probabilities of, of picking something and um, have a random number and uh, it'll, it'll assign things according to, the, according to the probabilities that you want. Okay, so let's say that we, we have, eventually we will, we, will, oops, we will come to a letter that we want to um, choose. So we'll set r square bracket r dot length end square bracket is equal to y. Now, uh, in other words, the next open slot, because uh, because this is an array, dollars r dot length just means the number of the next, the number of the highest slot that's been filled in plus one. Um, so 
it's a quite convenient thing. You can always go array, so R or A or whatever it is, square bracket, name of the array dot length, end square bracket, and that, that always means that the, the, the next slot to fill in. So we'd set that to, to Y, which is the numeric value of the character that we've chosen. And then we say, if Y equals 42, then include print word, else go to randomize. And we, we've already seen randomize. Randomize is the thing where we, um, we choose a random number based on the, the last character. So why, why 42 in particular? Well, 42 is the ASCII value of asterisk. And we've chosen, um, we chose asterisk to be our end of, um, our end of, uh, end of word special character. Um, so if we change the character here, we'd have to find what its ASCII value was and change the number, change the number here as well. So in other words, if we have chosen any letter other than an asterisk or any character other than an asterisk, then we haven't yet finished. We go to randomize. Um, and if we have chosen an asterisk, that is our signal to, to end and print, print out what we've done. And so this is the screen where we print um, the results. Um, we start with an empty, an empty string. So just quote, quote, we set set to that. And then we go from one to r dot length minus one. Because r is an array, um, r dot length is the, the highest filled in slot plus one. So this goes from one to the highest filled in slot, which is what we want. And in each of them, we add to Z, which is initially empty. We add this, this new command, string dot from char, which is for character code. Um, and it does have to be with those capitals. So capital S T R I N G dot F R O M capital C H A R capital C ODE and then in brackets dollars R square bracket dollars Y N square bracket. So this string from character code bracket some value end bracket is like the opposite of um, the opposite opposite of this code point code or code point at um, code point at turns a letter into a number. And this string from character code turns a number into a letter. And so once we've got all the slots of R, then we print $Z dot TO capital U P P E R capital F I R S T bracket N bracket. So two upper first, but again, we've got to make the U and the F capitals. Um, and all that does is just prints the prints it with the first letter as a capital letter um, so that it has the format of a place name, which is the particular thing that we're doing right now. And so that is how we uh, do what we did last video, but faster. Um, however, there is still uh, a bit of quite a lot of inefficiency actually because, and it's mostly found in this bit here when we're um, when we're searching for slots of this table that have been filled in, um, we most of the slots will be not will, will be undefined, and we will mostly be finding um, we're just going to skip past them. So there's a still faster way that we can do this. I don't know if we're going to notice much difference in speed, but at least it will be more sort of efficient in, in code terms anyway. Um, but that is something that I may show in a future video. But for now, um, I hope that you found what I did useful or interesting, and I hope you will tune in next time.